Hello, and welcome to this question and answer response video. All of the questions here came from a recent live training I did on what it means to be a Confluence Space Admin. Check out the link uh, somewhere here over my head. Here, we're gonna dig into every question asked in there. So check out the chapters, that'll show you exactly which questions and feel free to skip around. And if you think this is good stuff, please like it and drop in a comment with your own question and be on the lookout for other live trainings I've got coming up. All right. Let's jump into the questions. The first question I've got is, can you make a personal space private? Short answer is yes. Let's pop into Confluence and I'll show you what that looks like. A personal space is one that is created for each individual user. Your Confluence admin has to enable these. And the thing you're gonna look for is a space that just is called your name. In this case, Robert Heen is my space. Now you are a space admin of your own personal space by default. So if you click on space settings, you're gonna see every possible setting a space admin has. To make this space private, what I'm gonna do is look under space permissions, and I'll start off by going into users. And this will show me individual users that have access to this space. Now you'll notice I'm in here. And if I go all the way to the right, there's this admin setting. This is what makes me a space admin. But there's also these other individuals or integrations in this space. If I want to make sure that they can't see it, all I'll do is click edit and uncheck the view box. You'll notice this blanks out the rest of their access because if you can't view a space, you can't see it or interact with it. So I would do that and click save and then I would go to the groups tab. Groups are collections of individuals that a Confluence admin would put together. For example, I have one here called org admins. People added to that group would get access to my personal space. So just like users, I'll edit it and I'll remove that view access from every group that I don't want to see my space. Once I click save, their access will be revoked and my space will be private, only I can see it, or only people that I add to the users or groups list can see it. So yes, we can make our own personal space completely private. All right, let's jump into the next question. Are space categories useful? Short answer, yes they are. Let's jump into Confluence and I'll tell you what they are and why you should care about them. Now, if I click on the space menu in Confluence and go all the way to the bottom and click view all spaces, I'll see every space that exists in this instance. And even in this relatively small one, there is a very large number of spaces. So Confluence gives us categories, which show up here in the middle. Essentially, these are labels that we can put on spaces that let us sort them easily. For example, if I wanna see all of the knowledge bases, I have three. So they're very useful in instances where there are many, many spaces. Now, of course, you have to take time and energy to add them and make sure that they're properly applied. I'm gonna go back to my personal space and as a space admin, I'm gonna to go to space settings. And from here, if I go under manage space and look for space details, I'll be able to see any categories that this space has tied to it. I can quickly edit it and then add them. And you'll notice even here, they call them labels instead of categories. So I might have a brand new one that I need, a personal category. So just like labels on pages are useful in finding things, categories on spaces are useful. All it requires is for your group to determine what categories there are and then to properly apply them to spaces. Okay, let's pop over to the next question. The next question I have is, can space keys for deleted spaces be reused? The short answer is yes. The longer answer is a little bit more nuanced. As a space admin, I have the ability to delete the space by going into space settings and then clicking send space to trash. Now you'll notice that there's a lot of warning about this. And it's basically telling me that a space can be recovered. It can be taken out of the trash and put back into use. So if I click send space to trash, it isn't actually deleted. It's still in Confluence. It's just hidden from everyone except Confluence instance admins. If I click send to trash, the space key can't be reused because it's being used by the space, even though I can't see it. If that Confluence admin though purges the space, truly deletes it from my instance, then I'll be able to reuse the space key. Next question I have is, can shortcuts be added to the page tree? 
This is a great question because there's a very recent product change that changes how shortcuts show up when we go into Confluence. So I'll pop in and I'll show you what this looks like. Now, if you notice on my sidebar, there used to be a shortcuts section that is now completely missing. And this is because this instance has moved all of its shortcuts down into the page tree. Confluence is calling these smart links. And the shortcuts that were moved will show up under moved shortcuts. But you'll notice that each one of these is not actually a Confluence page. It's a link to something else. This is a link to my blog. And it shows up here as an attempt to embed it into Confluence. So yes, we can put shortcuts directly into the page tree. And to me, this is a great plus. It allows us to more easily display information where our folks are looking to find it. And I don't have to make it its own page. I don't have to tell them to go somewhere else. It's just all in Confluence. Now I can add more shortcuts by clicking Create and clicking Smart Link. And I could put in a specific link. I could link it to something else. But I'm going to use this to make sure my team can get all the information they need directly in Confluence. So yes, we can add those shortcuts directly into our page tree. Next question is, can we use page status in the search or filter fields? The short answer is no. The longer answer, though, is it does show up in a few places that might be useful. So if I'm in Confluence and I look at the top of the page, I'll see a status. This is intended to let anyone looking at it know, is this good content? Is it still under edit? Something like that. So the challenge with this is there's no way to search by page status. If I go up to search and advanced search, there isn't a filter that lets me find only pages that are done or filter out pages that are to do. So this makes it a bit challenging to use page status. If I've taught my team how to use it and what it means, they'll look at that and go, okay, it's still in progress. I shouldn't necessarily trust all the content. However, because I can't search for it, it makes it harder with bigger groups. Now, page status, however, does show up in automations and in databases. So for example, if I go to my space settings and click on automation and rules, I can create a rule that's going to leverage space status. For example, if a page is published, change the status to something. This can help me better manage my content. For example, if a page is updated, put the status back in in progress, or if a comment is added, do something to the status. The other place this shows up are in databases. If I create a new database, and this is a type of page content, it's still in beta, so you may not see this if your admin hasn't turned it on. But they are a great way to manage information. Check out the link up here somewhere uh, to a quick video I have on how databases work. Um, but I can add a column in here that includes page status. This can be one way that I track the status of my pages. So page status doesn't show up in any kind of search in Confluence yet, but it does appear linked in my databases so I can manage my content and in my automations so I can automate things around the page status. Next up, can we block a user or group of users from showing up in the search when we're adding permissions? No, we cannot. This question came around when someone was curious if we can prevent a space admin from selecting a certain person in the user dropdown. Maybe you don't want them to accidentally add them. So here I am under space settings again. And as a space admin, I'm going to go over to users or groups. And the question was asking if I edit this, could I prevent Robert Heen from showing up in the dropdown just to ensure an admin doesn't accidentally add them? I can't. The dropdown will show every active user, or if I'm under groups, it will show me every active group. So here we just have to be careful and train our admins. Be very careful because you'll see everyone, and if you accidentally add them, they'll get the access you provided. This is part of the balance of being an admin. You have a lot of power, you have to be careful with it. Here we have a question around which tiers of Confluence have access to the content manager. The content manager is a great tool that lets you more easily bulk edit content. It is only available to premium and enterprise groups. It can show up here in my sidebar or under my space settings, but has a lot of great information like when was the page last updated or viewed? 
How many people have used it in a year? I can even check multiple pages and do things like archive or delete them or run automations against them in bulk, giving me a lot of great tools for managing my content. But again, it's only available for premium or enterprise. The odds are, if you're using this in an organization, you have that tier, so you should, hopefully, have access to this particular tool to help manage all of your content. How do we change the logo of a space? Any space admin can do this, and it's a great question because changing the logo gives our spaces a little bit more personality. The logo appears in many places. The little hot dog next to the name of this space, in the space dropdown, here's my headshot, and to change it, I'm just gonna click on space settings. And I'm gonna look for space details. Now, if you're a space admin, you can see space details, but if you're not a space admin, you can't click this edit button. Clicking this will let you either upload your own image or there's a gallery of images that Confluence provides. There's not very much in here, but it can be helpful to change the icons to make them more visually identifiable to folks. So I'll encourage you to go through and think what's the most appropriate icon for your particular space. Next, a question about changing a space key. Can we change a space key if we export the space and then import it as a new space key? The short answer is yes. The longer answer is it will take way too much time to make that change. In order to export a space, we have to be a space admin. And we'll see here under space settings, there's an export space menu. This will allow me to export it in several formats. One use of this is to archive things. Another is to move a space between instances. Downloading these files though, will give you a zip file on your computer that contains a lot of information about the space. You could, if you had a lot of time, go through every single one of those files and manually change the space key from the old one to the new one, but you would have to do it everywhere it shows up. So typically this isn't the best use of anyone's time because there will be a lot of files you would have to manually update. So those are all the questions we had in the May 30th Space Admin Training. Check out the description for a link directly to it. Be on the lookout for more live trainings. We have one coming up soon about using templates in Confluence as well as basic training. If you like this, please like it, subscribe, and then drop in the comments any questions you have about Confluence, how to use it, or anything else about this great tool. Thanks so much for taking time to learn with me, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in one of these again soon. Mm -hmm.